what we're looking at here is the R Commander window and it's I've overlain it on the uh, R Studio environment so we're going to use both in this video and I if you'll note I've got the data set SV or Smith's VR uh, soil data set loaded and today we're going to have a look at our graphics so with an R Commander creation of graphs is really easy there's a menu and there's a whole bunch to choose from first of all we're going to have a look at histograms and I'm going to choose a variable that I know something about that's electrical conductivity and I am just going to click OK on that and what we will get is a histogram that looks something like that Okay. now that may not be what we want so what I'm going to use is the function from R Commander and then I'm going to do some edits with that inside our studio. I'll close that window and I'll just actually copy the function that we need. And there are a couple of ways we could do this. So within the R console and R commander we could just paste that in and as long as we specify the data object that we're using with the dollar syntax we can enter that and we get the graph back again. Okay, I'm going to quickly do something here which you can ignore for a while and It's starting to work a little better. Now running code from the R console is all very well but can be a little inconvenient and one way we can make it a little bit more convenient for ourselves and actually save the code at the same time is to make some R script. So I can copy that code into my R script uh, part of the uh, studio environment. I'm going to put some breaks in there, uh, just line breaks so I can see all the code that I'm working from and I'm going to actually save that code into my default folder which is set up in the R studio environment. Okay, This is something that you ought to do as well. So I'm going to call this prac3.r. It was a good idea to specify the file extension so that we don't end up getting confused. Alright, now I can do something about this. We can see that we've got a, a bunch of different things uh, that we can potentially change and there are other options within the histogram function or capital H hist. One thing we can do is change the number of breaks. So Sturges is an algorithm that calculates an ideal number of breaks but we don't have to use that. We can simply make it something else and if, one, if our cursor is within the line of script, even if it's broken across several lines, we can just hit run in our studio and we get a new graph. So you can see at lower right we've got a histogram with more breaks in it or a finer um, breakdown of the uh, categories of EC that we're calculating frequency for. Right, so that's um, kind of handy to know and we'd, we use a histogram of course to look at the distribution of a variable and we can see that in this case electrical conductivity or EC is positively skewed. It's got um, s quite a lot of low values but a long tail of, of high values. All right. How can we address this? Well, um, probably the best way to do that, visually at least, is with the log transform. So we're not saying that this is the log, the best way to do it. Um, and so I'm going to type log 10 before that and then highlight that and open a parenthesis around it and you see that R Studio will automatically include the final parenthesis as well around the text that we highlighted and I'm going to run that again. Okay. So what we've done with the log transform, we've at least made the, the distribution symmetrical. It's not necessarily a, a normal distribution but it's not too bad and I'm going to actually change that back to Sturges and run it again. Alright, so you can see that it's not 
not symmetrical depending on how you slice up the pie. Um, so something else we can do to just add a little bit more information to explore the distribution is add a, a frequency function to it. Uh, and so instead of scale being frequency, if we make that density, um, we can run that and you'll see that what we change is the y-axis on the plot so instead of being frequency or count of the number of values this is uh, density and then we can add another function to that called lines so lines is one of the graphic functions that just instead of plotting a new graph it'll over plot lines on an existing graph so I'm going to plot the density function of what we have already Oops, I think I instead of copied, I pasted. All right, so we copy and paste that. Um, now we're going to need to add a little tweak to this. We're going to put this little parameter in here na.rm, so remove na values equals true, and that actually works if you put an equal sign in there. Um, and uh, so this that applies to the density function so within these parentheses and within the parentheses for the lines function I'm going to make that a different color just for instance we'll make it blue um, and if I plot that I get if I actually specify right and put the equal sign in I get a density line of course that's not working so well at the moment maybe we don't like the dark color in the bars so let's make that gray and to avoid truncating the density line we can use y lim equals some constant um, a, a vector of values and this needs to be two values long the minimum and the maximum so instead of 1.5 we'll just make it two so we'll select all of the code that we've got and run it again and there's the graph that we get okay so there's a few tweaks you can do for histograms and of course we could just as easily remove the default number of breaks and run that thing again and you get a similar result okay so that's that I'm just going to put a, a division in our code. Now remember anything the hash before it is a comment so it's not run by R it just sits there and does nothing. And I'll keep saving. Good practice if you want to keep your script. And I'm going to go back to R commander and we're going to try a different type of graph. Right? So let's have a look at box plots because they're pretty useful as well. Um, and I'm going to choose another variable copper in this case and um, seem to have selected plotting by type and I don't really want to do that so I'm going to cheat a little bit I'm going to make that graph but then I'm going to copy the script and take it over to our studio and need to specify our data object and I'm just going to do a box plot very simple of one variable copper in the data set SV and run that. Okay, so a box plot needs a bit of explaining. It's a plot of uh, the a, again the distribution of a variable. The solid line in the middle of the box represents the median. Uh, the box spans the interquartile range, which means from the 25th to the 75th percentile, so it's the middle half of the data and the whiskers are either one the interquartile range plus one and a half times the interquartile range if the data go that far or they just go to the minimum or maximum if that's within those bounds and anything outside the interquartile range plus one and a half interquartile ranges is marked as a separate symbol or a potential outlier this is called a 
Tukey box plot um, developed by John Tukey, one of the, I guess, early workers in exploratory data analysis. So we can see that the data for copper are very skewed and we might want to think about how we can display that more clearly and one of the ways we can do is by editing the script we could just put a transformed y-axis in make this case sensitive we need to use lowercase run that again uh, but all this does is transform the axis and it doesn't transform the values so we still have exactly the same outliers we've just uh, made the details of the box itself a little bit more visible how would we transform it so we don't have too many outliers well what I'm going to actually do is to copy that line there and paste it here and instead of transforming the y-axis I'm going to make it log 10 and let's have a look at what happens when I run that so we've got pretty much the same scale except it's now in d different units it's in log 10 milligrams per kilogram in this case that's what we measure copper in and we can see that uh, the data are less skewed probably not perfectly unskewed if that's a word um, with only two outliers now okay what what else can we do with um, box plots to improve their appearance or improve the amount of information we get. One other thing we can do is this notch equals true. Um, remember that T uppercase and true are the same, the logical operator, and we can run that. You can see what that does immediately. It takes a little notch out of the side of the box, and that box is the approximate 95% confidence interval around the median. Now we can add means to box plots with a a separate set of symbols. Um, maybe in another prac we'll show you how to do that. Um, but that's quite useful. It enables comparison of different categories of data if we choose to plot it in that way. So let's do that now. Um, and remember that we had the variable type. So let's make copper dependent on. So we're going to use the little wiggly line symbol. Um, so it's not a hyphen. And make split up the data basically by a factor that we have in the data set, a categorical column of information, and run that again. So what it should do is split our plot up by sample type, but you notice we get a warning message down here, some notches went outside the hinges or outside the, the boundaries of the box, so we, it looks a bit weird. It's not wrong, but it's a bit weird. What we can use the notches for is if they don't overlap, that suggests that the groups have a significantly different median, so sediment and soil seem to be significantly different from one another, and that's worth following up with other more formal mean comparison tests uh, like analysis of variance or non parametric version of that, the Kruskal Wallace test. More on that in another prac. Alright, so because it looks a little bit unattractive, we, I'll delete those and let's play with some of the other things that we can do so run that and there's our plot but how can we make that a little more attractive some people like color and we can add color if we want um, and the way we do that is to add a vector of different colors let's for argument's sake use um, for sediment uh, I know that there's an R color called sky blue for soil being the next one, we'll make it tan, and street dust it seems appropriate to use grey, and we'll run that, and you can see that we get different coloured boxes. It's not necessary of course because we all have already have the labels down there, but it's okay to do it that way if you want. Um, so we can do that. Uh, you notice that the, the axis labels are not really suitable for a report. Um, don't look very attractive at all. So let's change them. So we can make the X label is equal to, and we need some quotes around it because it's actually text, sample type, and let's make the Y label is equal to uh, log 10 copper in milligrams per kilogram. Alright, 
let's have a go at that anyway. Uh, and we'll run that. I just hit Control Enter to do that. You can click Run or use Control R. There's various ways to do it. Okay, so we're starting to get access titles that look reasonable, um, and we can customize the graph even further. All right. And one of the ways we can do that is to use prior to plotting, we change the plot parameters. So PAR is actually a graphical thing, and we can just do something like this. Font for access labels. If we spell font correctly, that is always good. And two. Two is bold. One is normal. Three is italic. I think four may be a symbol font. You can uh, check the help on all of this and we can um, specify font axis as well just for interest we'll make that three I don't really recommend it that makes them into italics but we'll run that first and that sets up our graphic parameters you won't see any result from it um, and then run our box plot function and you can see what it's done it's made the axis titles bold which I quite like I don't really like italics for the uh, axis labels, so I would actually change that back. Deleting it is not going to work um, because it's already set. And then run all that again to get a graph that I like. Alright, uh, there is an issue, of course, in that the 10 in log 10 technically should be a subscript. It is possible to do that. It's tricky. Let's see if I can do it right now. Okay, so the Y label then needs to become what in R is an expression. And I'm going to highlight all that stuff in quotes and put some parentheses around that. Uh, and within an expression, um, I can paste different text elements together. So I'm actually going to do that as well. I'm going to paste. And need to wait and see how this is going to work. I'm going to have a thing that's log 10. I'm going to put square brackets around the log 10 bit and then a comma in between and open the quotes again for that. Now that should give us log subscript 10 pasted together with copper milligrams per kilogram. If I've got the syntax right, let's see what it does. Okay. Unfortunately, if we use an expression, it ignores what we set up in the parameters. So, uh, what do we do there? Well, we've got this whole thing here. What we want to do is to make that bold again. So, it's a bit of a pain. Uh, we put brackets around that. Run, run the whole deal again, and we've got our bold text back. Now the there's some aesthetic things that you might want to change here too. Um, we, we do have a lot of white space around the plot that we may or may not want to use uh, and we can change that in the parameters as well. Now we've already set font axis and but let, yeah let's get rid of that. Let, we'll leave font.label.lab there to remind us but I'm gonna change, I'm gonna delete that and change the margins all right so I'm going to make margins and we need a vector of four values so it goes one two three four so bottom left top right so clockwise from the bottom so let's make those four four one one and it's in lines of text um, and there's another parameter called called MGP which sets the distances of the axis label text and the, um, the axis text from the axis itself. And that's a vector of three lines, uh, three values. Uh, I'm going to make that 2.2, 0 0.7 and 0. Right there. What that should do is move the, the text a little bit closer to the axis if we run all of that. So let's have a go. And it has. So we've got rid of the white space and we've moved the text a little bit more pleasingly close to the axes. 
and if we don't like the colors for example we could delete them um, and if we hit this button in the middle rerun the region that we ran before it will run those two functions we run it again we go back to our white box plot I'm actually going to control Z or undo that because I kind of like it the colors and run them again if you use consistent colors for different sample types throughout a report say for every type of graph then actually makes it a little bit easier for the reader to understand what's going on okay so we've got a graph that we kind of like now um, we could tweak it a little bit uh, if we want and one of the ways that we could tweak that for instance might be to change the size of the text so what I'm going to do is to say CEX character expansion dot labels I'm going to make that equals 1.4 times the normal size and CEX dot axis so the axis labels equals 1.3 a little bit smaller so the the functions within the, the the parameters like this or the options within a function can go in any order um, they don't have to go in any particular order um, except for setting up the plot in the first place right so let's run that code and now I've got slightly bigger text which will make it easier if I want to reduce the size of that for example in a report okay so we use par or graphics parameters to set up some of the global ways in which a graph will plot and then we use the particular graphing function that we're interested to go for a few more details with that right so those are box plots and if we want to keep it of course that's easy enough in R Studio. we can export it and what I usually do is just copy it to the clipboard as a meta file we make sure we keep meta file selected copy plot so it's in our clipboard and then we can go to a word document for example and paste it in and retain very very high vector quality graphics um, which are sharp at most resolutions